little fib, a little white lie. Oh, hi, you're here, goody. At least now I'll have someone else to talk to. You see, Molly's mad at me. Tell them about the carrot? Okay, well, I kinda sorta told Molly a little itty bitty tiny tall tale about a carrot, and well, she kinda sorta believed it, and now she won't play with me. Come on, Mal, I'm sorry. You wanna know what little itty bitty tiny tall tale I told to Molly? Well, as you probably know, Molly doesn't like to eat her vegetables. Especially carrots, which is too bad because carrots are really, really good for you. Who's telling this story? Anyway, I told Molly that if she ate her carrots, she'd be able to see in the dark. So she did, and then she turned off all the lights to see if it worked. But it didn't. She got sort of scared. And now, well, she's mad at me, aren't you, Molly? Sorry. I told her that everybody tells little fibs and stretches the truth once in a while for fun. Wait a minute. Stretching the truth? That gives me an idea. I'll be right back. It's time to stretch and get things all loosey-goosey. Let's go. was quite a stretch. Ah. Oh, you know, I bet I stretch so much, I've grown a whole two inches. <laughs> nah, I haven't really grown two inches. That was just another tall tale. <laughs> that was a good one, huh, Molly? <laughs> oh boy, you still fishing for an apology? <laughs> Oh, come on, Molly. I'm really, really sorry about the carrot story. Fine. Never mind. Besides, I have to get ready. I'm going to the Cabbage Club cooking school today with Granny. Now, where's my backpack? Oh! Here's my backpack. Now, I know my wooden spoon is in here somewhere. The one Granny gave me. Tickle, tickle, tickle! <laughs> tickle, tickle! Oh, sorry. You know, what does Granny mean? You are what you eat. That's silly. I don't like it when clowns exaggerate. Oh, right. I did exaggerate about the carrot. Sorry. Sheesh. Here it is! Ta-da! Now... And... My apron! Ha, ha, 
about a carrot and seen in the dark? Now you're starting up again about those imaginary dust bunnies. For the umpteenth gazillionth time, dust bunnies aren't real. No! I have a song to prove it, because if it's in a song, it must be true. I don't believe in dust bunnies, no matter what she says. I don't believe in Dust Bunny, she's going through a phase. Molly, it's just make-believe, I'm sure that's lots of fun. But I don't believe in Dust Bunnies all over and under the big comfy couch. Dust Bunnies, <laughs> two furry little guys. Dust Bunnies, very noisy for their size. Fuzzy and Wuzzy, that really takes a prize. you? Well, I don't believe in dust bunnies, no matter what you think. I don't believe in dust bunnies, unless it's with a wink. Molly, it's just make-believe. They're imaginary friends. But I don't believe in dust bunnies. I know it's just pretend. <laughs> dust bunnies. Two furry little guys. Dust bunnies. Very bouncy for their size. Fuzzy and wuzzy. Couldn't be. Uh, whoa. <laughs> you okay? You all right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Molly, are we still friends? Goody! <gasps> hey! Want to come with me to the Cabbage Club cooking school? All right. Got my backpack and my spoon. We're all set. Let's go! Snickle Fritz, be a good cat and get down here. Hi, Granny. Oh. What's going on? Oh, hi, Uncle Chester. What's going on? Hmm? It's that cat. <laughs> Last week I told him he was sleeping so much he was turning into an old dog. <laughs> he believed me. <laughs> hi, I'm here. Oh, hi, Lunetka. Hi, Lunette. <laughs> What's wrong with Snick? <laughs> Granny told Snicklefritz, a silly little fib, that he's turned into an old dog. <laughs> <laughs> Major Redhead! <laughs> hi, I just flew in from Clown Town, and boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> You flew in all the way from Clown Town? Oh, not really. It's just an espresso. Huh? A kind of fib, Lunetka. Some clowns like to tell fibble fables. Because it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> He's afraid of dogs. <laughs> but Snick isn't really a dog, Major Bedhead. Oh, you big fibber. <laughs> you know. Little fibs can be fun, as long as they don't hurt anybody. But sometimes, if you don't understand what they really mean, they can lead to big problems. They can? Sure can. <sighs> wow, Snicky. Snick doesn't think he's a dog anymore. 
I'll get them. Good, because Lunette and I have got to go to the Cabbage Club cooking school today. But first, I have to make myself presentable. I'll just be a sec. Okay, Lunatka. Let's get cooking. Bye, Uncle Chester. Bye, Major Bedhead. Bye. Clown Town, Clown Town, we are going to Clown Town. Clown Town, Clown Town, here we come. The place that's full of friends, the place where silliness never ends. Clown Town, Clown Town. And now it's time for the Cabbage Club Cooking School, starring Chef Carbins. Okay, welcome to Chef Carbins' Cabbage Club Cooking School. First, a quick correction. You clowns watching yesterday's show, Fun with Beets, the recipe should have said one teensy teaspoon of honey, not a giant ladle of pepper. Anyways, today is all about you are what you eat. And here to help me is today's special guest clown, my lovely Lunetka. Hi there. We should remember that food is like gas in the tank. It gives us energy and pep and get up and go. Now, where did my broccoli get up and go? Green? about this big? Found it! Oh, that's great! But we don't need it because today we're gonna make world-famous Chef Garbanz's unbeatable beet soup. Because like I always say, you can't beat a beet. Right! First up, we need to take a bunch of these big red beets and put them into the blender. Then, my secret ingredient, prune and pickle juice. Then, one garbanzo bean for good luck. Then, we need to blend it up really, really fast. But, safety first. Ready? Ready. Okay, let her rip. Now, you want to blend the beets for about a day. But because we're short of time, this will do. Turn it off. Right. unbeatable beet soup. Serve it hot or cold. Here you go, Nuletka. Have a taste. Go on. Eat up. Remember, you are what you eat. I am? Then I don't want to eat beet soup. You don't? No, because then I'll turn into a beet. I just want to be Lunette the Clown. Oh, Lunatka, you're not going to turn into a beet. You are what you eat is just an espresso. That means that if you eat healthy food, you're going to be healthy too. It doesn't mean that I'll turn into a beet? No, that would be weird. I sort of knew that, but sometimes it gets confusing when clowns tell me things that aren't exactly true. <laughs> That's just for fun. Without a few little puffed up tails, life would be pretty dull. Oh, like the time Chef Garbanz told me that if I ate an apple seed, a tree would grow in my tummy. <laughs> <laughs> that made you laugh. <laughs> oh, right. For fun, I told my doll Molly that eating carrots would make her see in the dark. Well, they do, but not like a flashlight. I'm sorry, Molly. 
That wasn't funny to you, was it? Oh, you're right. Molly and I have to get back to the big comfy couch. See you later, Granny. Bye, clowns. Bye, Lunatka. Thanks for all your help. And I'll see you next time at the Cabbage Club Cooking School. Bye-bye. Come on, let's get back to the garden. That sure was a big, fun day in Clown Town, but now it's time to get back and get cozy on the big, comfy couch. <sighs> well, Molly, that settles it. I promise I'll never tell you a silly fib again, okay? No? Okay. What if we promise not to tell each other tall tales unless they're funny and make us laugh? Goody. So, what do you want to do now? Ooh, you want a story? Good idea. Hmm, let me see. Here's our storybook. And here are my glasses. Now, we need some good light. It's important to have good light when you're looking at books. This is the story of Bradley the Brave. Once upon a time, in downtown Clown Town, there lived a shy, sweet little boy named Bradley. Bradley was a happy little boy, except for one thing. He was very shy, but his sister Antoinette wasn't. Every clown liked friendly, pretty Antoinette. Bradley thought no clown even noticed him. On one cold, slippery, slidey winter's day, Bradley was walking to school with his sister. All the clowns said hi, but only to Antoinette. No one even noticed Bradley. It was while waiting to cross at the corner of Harumph and Giggle when something happened that would change Bradley forever. The crossing guard blew his whistle and Antoinette started to cross. Bradley bumped into a clown who bumped into a clown and... Pretty soon, every clown in Clown Town was down, except for Bradley. And because it was so slippery and slidey, none of them could get up. One by one, Bradley helped the clowns of Clown Town to their feet, including the mayor of Clown Town who asked, what happened? Bradley thought for a moment, he knew it was his fault the clowns fell down, and he knew he should tell the whole truth. But he really liked all the attention, so he just told half. News of his good deed spread quickly through Clown Town. They called him a hero and someone who would always stand up for Clown Town. They gave him a trophy and even named a sandwich after him. But pretty soon, Bradley realized that he didn't deserve all of Clown Town's thanks because it was his fault that the clowns fell down. It's not that he had told a lie, but he hadn't told the whole truth. Bradley decided he had to tell the truth about what happened. So he did, and they listened. And then they started to cheer because not only was Bradley someone who would stand up for Clown Town, he was also someone who told the truth, no matter what. And that's when Bradley became a real hero. They called him Bradley the Brave. The end. That was a good one, eh, Molly? Good for Bradley. It's always good to tell the truth, no matter what. And that's something to stand up for. Truth, just us and... Papa, what? Hey, who made this big mess? Me? Oh, right. I guess I did. Well then, I better clean it up. It's only fair. So get ready for the 10 second tidy. Ready, set, go! Ta-da! 
speed up. Well, Mo, I guess we've come to the one time when it's okay to lie. As in, lie down. <sighs> I'm very sleepy. I always like it when you come over, and that's the truth. Toodles. Okay, Molly, let's play the dream game. What should we dream about? It begins with the letter T? A telephone? Okay, call me when you get to dreamland.